And right now at five, we are continuing to track Hurricane Milton. Thank you for joining us today at five. I'm Anthony Austin. I'm Heather Crawford. We're glad you're with us. So the storm is expected to make landfall later tonight, and this is a look right now at Milton. Still tonight, a major hurricane. It is now hurling tornadoes and rain throughout Florida. And in these new videos from Clewiston near Lake Okeechobee, you can see possible tornadoes in the south central part of the state. And as we take a live look from St. Petersburg, we're learning that hours ago, the White House was briefed on the life saving preparations in Florida. President Joe Biden urging people to prepare for the storm of the century. A matter of literally a matter of life and death. So here is a live look now at New Smyrna Beach. Today, FEMA officials describing Hurricane Milton in their words like nothing they have ever seen before. An incredible video showing Milton's outer bands already impacting South and Southwest Florida. So this video right here, a tornado in Broward County as it crossed I-75 today. So far, no deaths reported in Florida. But Heather, those tornadoes causing extensive damage. This is video from uh, North Fort Myers today. Homes and trees damaged and you can just see debris in this video everywhere. And five confirmed tornadoes in Lee County so far, and that debris you see could become dangerous projectiles as Milton gets closer. So looking live now at the Bridge of Lions in St. Augustine, uh, you can see the wind blowing. You see that flag, yep, here's the flag right back right there here. by Anthony. Uh, and we want to turn things over now to Chief Meteorologist Tim Deegan. How about if we start off with a little bit of good news? This was forecast. Because of the shear, because of the drier air, slightly cooler waters because of Helene over the eastern Gulf that we thought that if we don't want to use the term weaken, how about retreat from being a cat five and even a cat four? Now this hurricane is a three, but still considered a major hurricane. That's a scientific term for any hurricane at three, four or five because they are exponentially worse than a one or a two. This is about just under 100 miles southwest of Tampa, even closer to Sarasota and Bradenton, and it does look like the eye will pretty much go over the Sarasota Bradenton area. Overall, the forecast has not changed. This will uh, be about two o'clock in the morning in the Lakeland uh, Disney area and then passing south of us at about 8 a.m. And that's significant. We'll talk about that in a moment, but the overall headline is this hurricane is going pretty much as forecast. Now it's still saying or the hurricane center is still saying northeast at 17. Actually, over the last hour, it's made a bit of a wobble. It's only moved about six miles, so that's an average, and this could be the sign that it's making a turn to the right. I mean, to be honest with you, if it continued northeast at 17, we'd have a problem here in Jacksonville. It would weaken, but that would still be a much worse scenario. So we think it's going to go along as forecast, but the next couple of hours actually kind of dramatic. Certainly more so for our friends down over West Central Florida, but we haven't seen it make that turn to the right yet. We think it will do that uh, or maybe is doing that right about now. So we'll keep a close watch on it. Uh, certainly here's the eye wall presentation. Notice the thunderstorms in the eye wall, but look out to, to the uh, east here. So uh, Heather and Anthony talked about that. These thunderstorms, in, in fact, these thunderstorms here are the ones that have been and are still producing tornadoes. They really came ashore in the Fort Myers area northward and now are lifting northeast. We're we'll zooming a little bit closer. So here is the hurricane. There's Sarasota Bradenton, probably pretty close to landfall. Everybody to the right of that is where the storm surge will be from 9 to maybe 13 feet. Uh, there is Tampa Clearwater. So this is the eye wall. This is the eye. There's actually vortices within the eye. And what we think is beginning to happen and would happen if it's going to come up against the front, which it is, there's about two or three vortices and those vortices come up against the front and can't go anywhere. And so then a vortice on the southwest side kind of wraps itself around. And so if you really were to follow this hour by hour, you would see this starting to wobble more in this direction. That's the forecast. We think that's what's going to happen. So let me talk about 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is when we think this hurricane by then a cat one talking about tomorrow morning will be at its nearest point to us. So that's when we will have our highest gusts. It won't be suddenly at six to eight in the morning, gradually increasing through the night. And that's also when it's closest to us due south of us that our heavy rains will begin to taper off. So that's a critical time period and position. And this position is about 120 miles south of St. Augustine. This is why although St. Augustine is under a hurricane warning and you're going to be hit hard, we think the hurricane conditions will probably be south of Daytona. I'm talking about sustained hurricane force winds. NAS Jacks 
uh, about 150 miles north of that position. But we've already had heavy rains, and especially for those of you south of Duval, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll show it to you. So here, the steady, they were wrapping around the hurricane, very persistent, and the northern fringes of the heavy rain just gradually lifting northward. But I want to show you where all the flash flood warnings are. I think World Golf Village in St. John's County, southward. At least, the interstate's fine, but at least as far as a lot of the uh, county roads are concerned, and Jessica showed you some way down toward Crescent Beach. So World Golf Village, south, Flagler County, and then right along the, the river in Putnam County and even extreme southeastern uh, Clay County. Those roads, many of those roads are already flooded and, impass and impassable. Also wanted to point out as far as the winds are concerned, the higher winds will be over the warmer waters of the wider sections of the St. John's and the beaches. So even as far north as Duval and Nassau, keep that in mind. We'll have much more on what's happening this evening in other areas due to the combination of the rains and the storm surge. All right, Tim, thanks so much. And we want to take a live look now at St. Augustine. This is St. George Street. Uh, you see not a lot of people out there tonight. Parts of the county under evacuation orders right now. We have live team coverage for you all across the First Coast. Our team out there working hard to keep you safe and informed. And we begin our coverage tonight with Jessica Clark on your side live tonight. Uh, and Jess, you're in downtown St. Augustine. How's it looking out there? Well, I heard you mention that it doesn't look very busy. Yeah, it's not very busy either, uh, but some people are still driving around like that that fella there uh, making some splashes. Not a lot of flooding in the roads, which is good to note at this point, but the city is preparing for it. So another common site in downtown St. Augustine in the month of October is the um, the pumpkins, the pumpkins at the pumpkin patch in um, in St. Augustine's church. It's the First United Methodist Church, and they often have the pumpkin patch. And the pumpkin patch, I want to point out, during October um, in 2016, during Hurricane Matthew, these pumpkins floated away because this area was flooded, and so there are literally floating pumpkins in the road. But you can tell this year that the church has put down uh, this netting to kind of secure the pumpkins from floating around again. And um, it, it's an interesting sight. And, uh, you know, to note that that was in October, eight years ago. Here we are, another M-named storm, Milton, the city doing many of the same kind of preparations um, that it has done for other storms since Matthew just because of the lessons it learned from experiencing Hurricane Matthew. Not just the city, but institutions such as the church here that had the pumpkins float away. We're live in St. Augustine. Jessica Clark, First Coast News, on your side. I remember that well with those pumpkins in the past. Thank you, Jessica. And our team coverage continues this evening from Putnam County. Jordan Wilkerson is joining us live in Palaka with what she's seeing out there. Jordan. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, right now we're off St. John's Avenue here in downtown Palaka, and I was mentioning in the four o'clock hit that some businesses prepared like Ralph's House of Flowers here. You can see lots of sandbags. There's also boarded up windows. This whole building is boarded up, so they did a great job preparing here. But let's walk a little bit farther down, shall we? Because there is another business connected to this building that hasn't really done much to protect. So of course we'll be checking back in uh, and to see how that fares as we go out through this evening. But notice lots of windows on this building, okay? And I, I am a little bit nervous if the, we do get projectiles. Not sure if those are uh, the, the, you know, the storm force windows or the hurricane uh, windows, but you can see here they have a few sandbags and that's about it. So of course we hope the best for this building here. Now I will say I have my anemometer winds right now actually have died down a little bit, but we aren't near the water. The water it was definitely picking up as you saw when I was there at four o'clock, um, but it I'm seeing like maybe eight miles per hour. Currently, you can even see some of the trees. I mean, they're really not moving that much at this point. The rain has died down significantly, not gone at all by any means, but definitely died down. And actually earlier when I went by one of these sandbag locations and talked to some of those folks who were sandbagging, 
or gathering the sand. One lady was telling me storm hasn't even hit yet and I can't even flush my toilets. She didn't want to go on camera, but she basically said that the sewers are already starting to back up and she can no longer flush her toilet. So we're going to keep We'll be out here all evening and tonight and give you the latest, of course, from Palaka. But we hope that everyone stays home, stays safe, and does a little bit more uh, their home and business. Reporting live from downtown Palaka, Jordan Wilkerson, First Coast News, on your side. Joining you, stay safe out there tonight. Thank you so much. So we want to go now to Flagler County, where people are making last-minute preparations. Our Riley Phillips is on your side live tonight in Flagler Beach. So, Riley, how are conditions where you are right now? Yes, I'm along the intercoastal here in Flagler Beach. It's been a steady rain, steady wind throughout the day, although it does seem like the wind and the rain are starting to pick up a little right now. Parts of A1A were already covered with water this afternoon, but the town really seemed like a ghost town. Not a lot of people out on the roads. Most of the businesses were closed already and boarded up. I spoke with one homeowner who lives in a neighborhood along the intercoastal. He was putting those... And we're having some audio issues there with Riley. Uh, we're going to try to get those fixed for you. We'll go back to her a little later. But we do have crews all across Florida, including Ortega. A live report from that area next on First Coast News at 5. But first, Tim. And the hurricane is on the move. The eye is now within 50 miles of Sarasota. That's about 200 miles southwest of the First Coast. We'll have a closer look at the First Coast weather in just a few moments. And let's show you a live look right now over Tampa. Mm. Hard to see from this camera's uh, point of view. Sunshine Skyway Bridge is closed in that area as Milton just hours away from making landfall. We're continuing to track Hurricane Milton next on First Coast News at 5. Stay with us. This is First Coast News on your side at 7. And thank you so much for joining us for this Tracking Milton special report on First Coast News. I'm Jeannie Blaylock. I'm Heather Crawford. The eye wall is coming ashore in the Sarasota Bradenton area right now. And here are three things to know about Milton right now. St. Johns County residents, you are being told to conserve water the best you can for the next 48 hours. They say avoid doing laundry if you can, limit showers, limit flushing the toilet. A mandatory evacuation is in effect for St. Johns County. Those folks who live in zone A and B and zone F, if you are south of 206, you are under mandatory evacuation. And tonight in her 605 news conference, Jacksonville Mayor Donna Deegan said, now is the time to stay off the roads. Go home, be in your safe space and stay put. Live team coverage across the First Coast keeping you updated now on what is happening in your neighborhood. We are covering areas all across Florida covering every angle of the storm, including the latest from our chief meteorologist Tim Deegan and our meteorologist Ross Muma. Heather and Jeannie, we want to take a look now at Milton's impacts across Florida. Some incredible new video tonight. Look at this. This is in Wellington, Florida in Palm Beach County. Uh, this possible tornado touching down just before five o'clock this evening. And in this video, you can see at one point cars just speeding away from the tornado. Residents described it sounding like a bomb going off. Firefighters have now been going door to door in that area, trying to make sure that everyone who lives there is OK. Heading north to St. Lucie County, the sheriff's office there took this video. Look at this devastation. This is from a tornado. Uh, this was near the county's sheriff's office. The sheriff saying the tornado took out that 10,000 foot red iron building that you see in this video right here. Now the good news is no one was inside when that tornado ripped through the area. And take a look at this flooding right here. Uh, I believe this is the Fort Myers um, area. This is as the hurricane moved closer to the coast ahead of making landfall. Water continues to rise in Florida streets. Uh, you can see just how much wind there is. Look at the palm trees right here just blowing in the wind. A suspected tornado also ripped through that area, causing some other damage. Jeannie. Right now we're checking in with Chief Meteorologist Tim Deegan for a look at the forecast and what are we seeing on the radar as we are tracking this storm? Well, we just got the 7 p.m. in, so we're going to share that. So this just came in from the Nestor Hurricane Center. Still a cat three and basically moving ashore as Heather mentioned. Now we can't say that the center of the eye has but the uh, eastern eye wall into Sarasota and Bradenton, and it's just been reported the northern eye wall into the St. Pete and Tampa Bay area. So making landfall, at least its eastern half, 
if we can say that. The center point, the lowest pressure, is still about 30 miles to the west-southwest of Sarasota. Okay, that's for them. What about for us? The forecast remains the same, and it's going to pass off to the south of us by about 8 o'clock in the morning. Our winds will pick up through then, our rain will continue through then, and then the, the rain will taper off dramatically tomorrow morning between about 6 and 9. Not so much for the winds. They will more gradually drop. But I'm going to go to a graphic that a lot of you say you want to see again because you've been hearing that maybe this is going to be like Irma. I understand why you're thinking that, but this is not going to be as bad as Irma. Major hurricane, but we're in its northern fringes. So let's compare the numbers. As far as the St. John's River, and I'm talking about the St. John's River from Duval and then on, on down to Orange Park and St. John's Banks. Uh, so think even down into Doctors Inlet uh, and um, Doctors Lake. So this is what Irma did. It rose to five to seven feet above normal, two to four for Milton. So we're going to be about three feet below. If you were here, think about what happened. I think for most of us, three feet means just into streets as opposed to into homes and businesses. The next critical high tide Main Street Bridge will be at uh, four o'clock in the morning. Of course, it varies up and down. For those of you in St. John's County, especially along the ocean, Matthew was five to eight. Milton is going to be three to five. Again, about two to three feet below that gauge. All hurricanes are different, but many of you keep wanting to see that, so I wanted to share that with you again. So the nearest tornado warning right now, there was one over the Cape, there's not, and that's why at least for the next several hours, we're primarily talking about heavy rains. Still looks like the worst that this hurricane has to offer for our first coast, Putnam County, and then those of you in St. John's County. All right, thanks, Tim. And we are already seeing flooding in parts of St. John's County. Emergency Management shared these photos here on Facebook of flooding in Flagler Estates. Justin Clark joins us live now from St. Augustine. And Jess, where are you seeing whatever you're seeing right now? It looks like there's water there on the street behind you, but you've been seeing some flooding already into yards. Well, you know, because it's, it's close to low tide here, that we are not seeing a whole lot of water on the streets in Davis Shores, which is where I am. And, and that's a good thing. We're seeing some ponding, but that's to be expected. We'll see what happens with high tide. I am standing right now in front of something that is of great importance to the people of St. Augustine and Davis Shores, and that is a lift station. I know it's not very glamorous, but right here keeps the sewer system working properly and these lift stations all around St. Augustine 13 of them during Hurricane Matthew stopped working effectively and we had sewage coming up uh, into the streets in the flooded areas and also into the homes and so since uh, that storm the city has been working on this project for years to lift up these lift stations. And I know it might be hard to see with the black gate all around it, but this lift station now is about shoulder high. It's on a platform that's about shoulder high and they're run by generators. So they hopefully won't stop working, but this essentially keeps the wastewater treatment system working, your sewer system so that you can flush the potty and it goes where it's supposed to go. This is of great importance during big storms like this, which put a little bit of extra stress on the wastewater system all around town. We hope it continues to work. Live in St. Augustine, Jessica Clark, First Coast News on your side. We sure do, Jess. Thanks for being out there in the elements tonight. Right now, people in Benel are being asked to limit their water use. Riley Phillips is on your side live tonight near a water lift station there. Uh, so Riley, describe what you're seeing and what you've learned there. Yes, I'm in a neighborhood right off of US 1 in Pinellon. If you can see behind me, this road is completely covered with water right now. You can see the water line starts right where those two mailboxes are. If we turn this way, this person's yard is completely underwater. This is the side of someone's yard, completely underwater right now. And if we keep going down this road here, this section of the road is also starting to become covered with water. You can see the sides of these people's yards 
filling with water right now. It's a similar scene as we drove around the rest of the neighborhood earlier. The city of Bunnell is asking people to conserve water, limit their water use tonight so the system doesn't fail. But I just spoke with a man who lives on this street and he told me that his yard started filling with water about noon today. It's the worst he's seen. He says this happens a lot whenever they get a lot of rain, but this is the worst he's seen. He also says he has never seen the road fill with water, be covered with water like this. So he is definitely concerned and he is starting to make plans to leave. I also want to mention Flagler County, the entire county is now under a curfew. It went into effect at 7 and it will go until tomorrow at 730 in the morning. In Neptune Beach, crews have been preparing all day for Milton's impacts. You're taking a look at video showing the installation of what's called a tiger dam to try and help protect the dunes. Our Zach Wilcox joins us live tonight from Neptune Beach. Uh, Zach, you got your rain jacket on, your hood up. It looks windy behind you. How are conditions right now? Yeah, Heather, you know, it's always a little windier by the beach, right? Gotta love paradise and the rain is blowing in sideways right now. So I was hoping to show you the good news is that they finished the tiger dam. The bad news is we can't really show it to you because you just immediately get uh, a camera lens full of water. But it's you'll have to take my word for it. You got three tubes that they blew up, two on the bottom, one on the top. Each one's 18 inches, so that's a good three feet there that they will have to block any kind of storm surge coming in. And I did want to show you one of the lower lying areas here. The water is starting to pool at the base uh, where the beach access is here between LA Beach and Neptune Beach at Beaches Town Center. And I we talked with some of the businesses down at Beaches Town Center and they mentioned that it's been a couple of years that they haven't put any kind of boarding up on their windows or anything like that. But they felt like with this storm, the way the mayor was talking about it over the past couple of days, they felt like they were obligated to do something. So we were able to chat with actually the property manager of four different businesses downtown. We're talking about Ragtime and over across the street, Flying Iguana, some of those businesses. We were able to chat with him while he was putting that uh, that boarding up. We're going to feel something here and I'd like to be prepared and and not have, not have damage, not have theft. Uh, not have to try and uh, rebuild, you know, floors or, or anything else in these restaurants. You know, I say he boarded up, but it was kind of interesting because he was actually putting over cloth barriers, and he mentioned that those work for a lot of their businesses that far inland, but, you know, they do have a, some water get up there sometimes, so hopefully that tiger dam will be able to prevent that from happening with three feet to block it from the ocean. In Atlantic Beach, Zach Wilcox, First Coast News, on your side.